the Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with songs by Martha Tilton and the King's Men, and music by Billy Mills. The show opens with There's a Great Day Coming Manana. to have a lot of fun with electric trains. Even now, whenever I see one spread out on a playroom floor, I can hardly resist the temptation to join the party. I guess that's one of the reasons why I always get a thrill when I see a modern, glittering streamliner whiz by. How would you like the job of washing one of those streamlined beauties, keeping it clean and sparkling? Some job, I should think. And yet, even there, wax can lend a hand, protect those shining surfaces against wear, and make cleaning a much easier job. Yes, sir, at the Johnson's Wax Laboratories, they have actually developed a special wax dressing which can be sprayed or brushed on the outside of these trains. A wax polish, if you please, that makes the job of washing a streamliner relatively easy. It's already being used successfully on the Milwaukee Road's famous Hiawatha. An interesting example of how far the makers of Johnson's Wax have gone in making their wax polishes useful to industry as well as to your home and mine. For your own protection, the next time you're shopping, be sure to get the genuine Johnson's Wax Polish. you had gone to Hollywood and been co-starred in a moving picture. And then the picture was going to have its world premiere next week in your neighborhood theater in your hometown. Just imagine how you'd feel if the picture was, look who's laughing. The theater was the bijou, the town was Wistful Vista, and you were Fibber McGee and Molly. Isn't it thrilling, McGee? Yeah. Imagine us in the movies and having the premiere right here in Wistful Vista. Yeah. Well, this town's been good to us, and they deserve it. <laughs> I'll always remember Wistful Vista. Even when I get to be a big screen lover like Henry Fonda and Gary Cooper and Billy Burke. <laughs> no, Billy Burke is a woman. He is? I mean, is she? Oh, well, you know what I mean. I mean, when I get started playing romantic scenes with some of them glamour gals like Jean Hersholt and... No. <laughs> Jean Hersholt is a man. Is she? Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> Maybe you better do westerns. Nobody will care whether your horse is a boy or a girl. <laughs> No, I'm more the romantic type. I'm the type Oh, of... now, take it easy, McGee. Huh? Take it easy. Remember, there's only one man who will ever command respect by blowing his own horn. Who? Gabriel. <laughs> Incidentally, did you call the Bijou Theater and reserve a block of uh, seats? Oh, say, I better do that. Give me the phone. Here. Thanks. Hello, operator. Give me the Bijou Theater. Hey, is that too much? <laughs> Oh, dear. More dirt from Mert. <laughs> How's every little thing, Mert? It is, eh? What's say, Mert? Your sister. Broke her nose, eh? Oh. Oh, that's wonderful, Mert. Oh, heavenly days, McGee. What's wonderful about that? Her sister made a lot of dough on the stock market, but just how much? Only her broke her nose. <laughs> Okay, I'll call him later. Uh, goodbye, Myrtle. <laughs> the line's busy, Molly. Well, we better get busy, too. Huh? If we're going to invite Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy to stay with us next week, we've got to straighten up this house. And anyway... Who's that? I'll peek out and see. Uh-oh. It's Mrs. Uppington. And you ought to see her. She's got on one of them off-the-face hats. Well, <laughs> on her, it should look good. She's got one of those off-the-hat faces. <laughs> 
Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Uppington? So nice to see you. Oh, how do you do, my dear? And Mr. McGee? Hi, Uppy. Well, you look in the pink of condition. <laughs> Though I didn't know conditions were that bad. <laughs> You mischievous boy. Yeah, I'm a rip. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'm afraid you're always pulling my arm. <laughs> as the saying goes. <laughs> it's a uh, leg as the saying really goes, Abigail. Yeah. I know, my dear. But I have always maintained that humor was not necessarily dependent on vulgarity. <laughs> no, but it sometimes helps. <laughs> Hey, what you got there, Uppy? Been doing some Christmas shopping? Christmas shopping? Oh, 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 my, I almost forgot. Here, this is for you. For us? Oh, Abigail, you shouldn't have done it. Yeah, how do you know she shouldn't have, Molly? Uh, well, what is it, Uppy? You may unwrap it if you wish, Mr. McGee. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh, well, what? Well, heavenly day. Oh, a drinking fountain. A new smoking stand. Oh. And streamlined. Oh. Beautiful, Abigail, but why? Oh, well, my dear, with all those important people coming for the premiere next week, I thought that, oh, well, I, I did want your house to look nice. And the one bad note in this room, to me, has always been that ash receiver of Mr. McGee's. <laughs> so I took the liberty. Oh, how oh, thoughtful of you, Mrs. Uppington. I am simply delighted. Yeah. And that old smoking stand of McGee's was beginning to smell horribly of cigars. Well, it's... Getting hard to find cigars made of gardenias. <laughs> Defense program, you know. <laughs> ah, but thanks, Uppy. Gee, it's really beautiful. Uh, well, the only thing is, it makes your Davenport look very shabby and tired. <laughs> oh, say. It does with that, McGee. Huh? Look at that velour. The nap looks like it just heard the alarm clock. <laughs> get a new Davenport, you know. Oh. oh, we might at that, McGee. What do you say? Well, I don't know, Molly. They come I... to think of it, there's a clearance sale at the bond town, isn't there, Abigail? Oh, indeed there is, my dear. Well, in fact, I just bought this hat there. <laughs> isn't it simply ducky? <laughs> it's ducky, all right. It's as foul a hat as I McGee. ever... McGee. It's quite all right, Mrs. McGee. After all, one never expects a man to understand a woman's taste in hats. <laughs> Say, isn't it the truth, Abigail? And why should he talk? <laughs> Did you ever see him in that little green Tyrolean hat of his with the yellow feather in the band? <laughs> oh, indeed, I have, my dear. <laughs> he looks quite dashing. Oh, dashing, eh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> dashing home from a dog fight. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> what do you mean, touche? I never wore a touche in my life. <laughs> I've got as much hair now as I ever had. No, what's more... no, no, dearie. Not toupee. Touche. Oh. That's a French expression, meaning I got you that time, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> and you are quite right, my dear. Men should never criticize women's clothes. I should say not. Look at all the silly pockets a man has in his clothes. Huh? At least four in his trousers. Uh, four in his vest and, uh, five in his coat. Thirteen pockets. Yes, and all on account of you women. Why, what do you mean, Mr. Well, look, take the four in the pants. In the left-hand hip pocket, a wallet to pay for them silly hats. In the right-hand hip for a card case. Yeah. So when you use up all our dough, we can identify ourselves and write a check. In the left front, small bills. All we ever have left. In the right hand, small change. On account of you never have two bits to tip the girl in the powder room. Now, just a minute, McGee. Now, I let me get through. Next, the best. In the lower left hand, door keys on account of it takes a woman 15 minutes to find her own. Yes, but... In the lower right hand, watch so we can check up on how late you always are. Oh. Upper left hand, small flashlight to find the gloves you dropped in the movie. In the upper right hand, fountain pen to write the check when we've identified ourselves from the card case in the pants pocket. Yes, but the coat, Mr. McGee... I'm coming to the coat. Oh. First, the inside breast pocket. There's the gas bill you wanted us to mail because you forgot it until today. The outside breast pocket. Handkerchief for you to cry in at the movie where you dropped your gloves. On the lower left side, compact and lipstick where you ain't got room for them in on account of your purse. And the lower right side, empty. So you can tuck your hand in and get it warm on account of you lost your gloves in the movie. Ah, toupee, girls, toupee. <laughs> The King's Men sing Louisiana Hayride. I'd like to be again a kid on the farm again, working till the sun goes down. Get out the wagon, pile in the hay, gather all the folks for miles around. 
around them. Get going, Louisiana hayride. Get going, we all is ready. Get going, Louisiana hayride. Get up and start to roll. Oh, get going, Louisiana hayride. Get going, we all is ready. Get going, Louisiana hayride. Get up and start to roll. Oh, I like that sport, for riding in the hay. I love it near the way. Oh, 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 the time is short. Crack your little whip and get your little ship to go. Get all aboard, take a little ride. Moon is shining bright. Pile in the hay, sing and play. We'll take a ride tonight. Get it up, Nelly. Henry, call the roll. Yes, sir. Maybell, Emily. We is here. Sally, Isabel. We is here. Mortimer, Ferdinand. We is here. Jeremiah, Franklin. We is here. Clementina, Carolina, Evelina, Dinah. We is all here in the evening by the moonlight. You can hear the darkies singing. As we ride in the evening by the moonlight on the Louisiana hayride, the night is bright, bright as day. By my head will nod, silently back home we'll plod. Whoa, Nelly, whoa. How I'd love to be again, a boy to go and see again, the yellow moon to blow again, to sing the gallon go again, hey, right in my hand. Bottom, McGee. Shall we go downtown and buy a new Davenport or shan't we? Oh, I suppose we better. Oh, we'll never get as good a one as this one has been. Yeah, you'll never save that many cigar coupons again either. <laughs> you said it, baby. I practically inhaled all the furniture in this room. <laughs> I wish you'd have taken a few extra puffs and got a better-looking floor lamp. What's the matter with the floor lamp? Well, the cord's all frayed, for one thing. I've told you a dozen times to run the wire under the rug. You doggone it, I tried to. and darn near smothered under there. <laughs> well, never mind that now. Get your hat and let's get going. With this clearance sale, we ought to get a nice Davenport. Oh, come in. Hi, mister. Oh, hi, little girl. I'm sorry I haven't got time to talk to you now. I, I got to go downtown. Why? Got to buy a new Davenport. Why? Well, because we're expecting some important guests next week. Why? Because they're holding the world premiere of our picture at the Bijou Theater next week. That's why. And stop asking why. Who? Hmm? I says stop. Oh. <laughs> Sis, you're impossible. I am not, I bet you. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, yes, oh, you are. Oh, no, I'm... I can't be impossible, I bet you. Why? Because impossible means it couldn't happen, and I happen. Why? And stop saying why. Okay, okay. All I can say, sis, is you've certainly got a gift for button in here whenever we're ready to go someplace. Gee, have I, mister? What is it? What's what? My gift. I didn't say you had a gift. I... You did, too? I heard you just as quaint. Well, I didn't mean it that way. I meant it. Engine giver, engine giver, engine giver. That, that is just keep quiet. I'll give you a gift. I'll, I'll do anything. But quit yelling at me. Now, what do you want? Tell me a story. <laughs> Gee. Sis, you mean to stand there with your first teeth making a last stand? <laughs> and ask for a story when you know darn well we're in a hurry to get downtown? Gee, mister, I guess you don't love little children. Yes, I do, too, love little children. Don't you love big men? Gee, sure I do, mister. You want me to tell you a story, hmm, do you, hmm? <laughs> oh, I'd much prefer that. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a little Boston Bull Terrier, and some bad boys tried to tie a tin can on him, but they couldn't do it. <laughs> Well, go on with the story. That's all. It was a very short tale. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, very likely. 
tale. If that little twerp ever... McGee, never mind that. We've got to get down to the furniture store. It's getting late. Oh, it is. Okay. Well, come on. Let's go. Mrs. McGee, I assure you that this is definitely the Davenport for you. All right, Mr. Twomley. Send it right out. Very well. Now that you have this lovely new Davenport, don't you think the rest of your furniture might look just a eeny, teeny, weeny bit uh, lousy? <laughs> now, wait a minute, Twom. You can't stand He's there. He's right, McGee. Absolutely right. With all our old stuff, that new Davenport will be as conspicuous as a cow in a canoe. Indeed it will, madam. Whereas it should be as casual as a hug on a hayride. Oh. oh. Well, what are we going to do about it? Move everything out but the Davenport and just let the guests in three at a time? No, but we've got to have new draperies and a couple of end tables and that bookcase is pretty battered. And the floor lamp isn't much good. Uh, what kind of a floor lamp is it? Oh, it's one of them three-way lights, bud. It goes out if you bump it, touch it, or look at it. <laughs> well, maybe you're right, Molly. Why, of course I'm right, McGee. Next week is one of the most important occasions in our lives. Uh, uh, and with some new furniture, why, we... Hello, can... Molly. Hello, Fever. Hello, Harlow. Well, what's the matter with you, Mr. Wilcox? You look like someone had stripped the gears on your kitty car. Hi. <laughs> oh, it's nothing. Forget it. I just met Billy Mills down the piano department, and he offered me tickets to a football game, and I lost my temper, that's all. Oh. Heavenly days, why? Well, I just dislike football, that's all. I despise it. I hate football. I don't understand, Mr. Wilcox. Why should you have such an aversion to the thrilling spectacle of 11 muscular gentlemen kicking the teeth out of 11 other muscular gentlemen? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what my aversion is. How could I, a guy making his living selling genuine Johnson self-polishing glow coat, the finest no-rubbing, no-buffing floor polish, how could I ever enjoy a game that depends on substitutes? Oh. oh. <laughs> Always sending in substitutes. It burns me up. Oh, but Mr. Wilcox... You could watch the practice games. Maybe a good scrub team would... Listen to her. Scrub team. Don't say scrub to me. With Johnson's self-polishing glow coat making your kitchen linoleum so easy to keep clean and beautiful without old-fashioned scrub... Whoop. Oh, I can't stand it. Let me out of here. Scrub team. Substitutes. Football. Oh! <laughs> Temperamental fellow, isn't he? <laughs> oh, he takes his work very seriously, Mr. Twomley. Yeah, he's almost too conscientious. That guy won't even send the home office a night letter unless it's a nice night. <laughs> well, what am I waiting for? Or what are we waiting for? <laughs> uh, where are the draperies, Mr. Twomley? Oh, yes, the draperies. Right down the stairs over here, Mrs. McGee. <laughs> I think these draperies will do us very nicely, Mr. Twomley. Yes, I think you've done us very nicely, too, Twomley. <laughs> oh, thank you. And now for some of the smaller pieces, Mrs. McGee. What do you mean, smaller pieces? Ain't we bought enough stuff? Now, McGee, be reasonable. Huh? With the new Davenport and new draperies, we can't have that other tacky-looking furniture spoiling the effect. You mean just because we got a new ashtray, we got to refurnish the whole house to go with it? <laughs> why don't I just give up smoking? For good? Well, why not? You can't do it. I can, too. I've done it a dozen times. <laughs> Why, I remember the... Oh, wait. Excuse me a moment. Some gentleman is trying to catch my attention. Uh, was there something I could do for you, sir? No, my dapper dispenser of domestic doodads. There's nothing you can do for me, but I'm about to do something for you. One of those charitable impulses to which I rarely become a victim. Hey, Molly, it's Horatio K. Boomer. Hi, Boomer. Hello, Mr. Boomer. We haven't seen you for a long time. Hi there. Good day, my dear. A nasty November to you, soybean. Where you been keeping yourself, Boomer? Haven't been keeping myself, Egg Roll. I've been kept. <laughs> been detained for a few months upstate on a charge of loitering. Oh, loitering. Why, they can't sentence you for several months just for loitering. They can if you're loitering in the First National Bank after closing hours, my dear. <laughs> well, what were you doing in there after hours? Just trying to straighten out a check, stub. 
But what was it you wished to see me about, sir? Oh, yes. Thought you might like to know I saw a shoplifter upstairs. Oh. On the fourth floor in the west wing. Suggest you investigate. Heavenly days, a shoplifter. Are you sure, Mr. Boomer? Certainly, certainly. I should know a shoplifter when I see one. I'll say you should, Boomer. You've seen so much of the seamy side of life, you got lint in your outlook. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Mr. Boomer. I'll report the matter very shortly. We don't like shoplifters in here. Glad to be of service, my boy. Remember, fourth floor, west wing. Saw the fellow several times with my own eyes. Well, good day, my dear. The superficial so long to you, simp. So long, then. Well, imagine Mr. Boomer meeting a shoplifter face to face. Incidentally, what do they sell in the west wing of the fourth floor, bud? Uh, looking glasses and mirrors. Oh, <laughs> Now, uh, let's see. Uh, what other furnishings did you have in mind, Mrs. McGee? Perhaps... Martha Tilton sings Blue Champagne. Blue Champagne, purple shadows and blue champagne. With the echoes that still remain, I keep a blue rendezvous. Bubbles rise like a fountain before my eyes, and they suddenly crystallize to form a vision of you. All the plans we started, all the songs we sang, each little dream we knew seems to overtake me like a boomerang. Blue is the sparkle, dawn is the tang, each old refrain keeps returning as I remain with my memories and blue champagne. To toast the dream that was you All the plans we started All the songs we sang Each little dream we knew Seems to overtake me Like a boomerang Blue is the sparkle Gone is the tang each old refrain keeps returning as I remain with my memories and blue champagne to toast the dream that was you. Boys, but please move that bookcase farther to the right there. Uh, uh, careful, fellas. Don't scratch my new ashtray. That's it. Thank you very much. Okay, lady. <laughs> well, uh, how does it look, McGee? Ah, I got Everything admit... in its place already. Yeah, looks pretty good, Molly. Especially yep. the ashtray. You know, if it hadn't been for Mrs. Uppington, we'd have never refurnished this room. Bless her heart. <laughs> I wish she had to pay the bill, darn her hide. <laughs> Don't talk like that, dearie. This room is really livable now. The only thing I don't like is this new rug, Molly. It's a beautiful rug. A genuine oriental. The tag says it was made by the Weave a Million Rug Company in Hackensack, New Jersey. Absolutely. I always say if you buy an oriental rug, get one made by honest American labor. <laughs> Come in. Hello there, Mrs. McGee. Hello, Mr. McGee. Oh, hi, Wimple, old man. Come in and curl your corpus up on our new Davenport. Well, uh, how are you today, Mr. Wimple? Oh, just fine, Mrs. McGee. I saw the men moving your new furniture in, so I just sat right down on the curbstone and wrote you a poem. Oh, how nice. I'll reserve judgment till I hear your living room lyrics, Wimp. I think it's one of my best pieces, Mr. McGee. I really do. The title is, The End Table Broke Its Leg and We Had to Shoot It Back to the factory. <laughs> well, read it in your 
well-modulated voice, Mr. Wimple. All righty. It goes... <clears throat> Here's to the McGee's in their well-furnished home. I hope they'll be happy, this princess and prince. <laughs> prince don't rhyme, Wimple. <laughs> I know, Mr. McGee, but I don't like to call you a gnome. <laughs> They have only one piece which the room could well lack. That new straight back chair should be sent right straight back. Do you like it? What, the chair or the poem? I think it was very sweet of you, Mr. Wimple. Do you often sit down on curbstones and write poetry? Oh, we poets must work wherever the mood strikes us, Mr. McGee. Uh, some of my best work I do while I'm... Well, almost anywhere in the house. <laughs> except, except, uh, except in my wife's gymnasium. I, I can't work there. See, uh, your wife is very athletic, isn't she, Mr. Wimple? Indeed, she is, Mrs. McGee. She can put the shot 99 yards, you know. Honest? You go in for any of that stuff, Wimple? Only the hundred-yard dash, Mr. Wimple. Well, has Mrs. Wimple any feminine qualities, Mr. Wimple? Oh, yes, Mrs. McGee, of course. She's really a very feminine person. You should see men leap up to give her their seats on the streetcar. Do they really? Indeed they do. Or else. <laughs> well, I just dropped in to say hello, folks. So, goodbye. <laughs> Poor little Wimple. He sure has it tough, don't he? I'll bet the worm will turn someday, McGee. Yep. Just in time to see the hen's last peck. <laughs> oh, well, let's forget Wimple. Let's just sit here and enjoy my new ashtray and stuff. <laughs> oh, isn't this room beautiful now? Yeah, my new ashtray sure sets it off, don't it? Ah, good old Uppy. Oh, and isn't this da uh, Davenport comfortable, though? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll bet my hip will heal up now where that spring always dug into it. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Just look how the pattern in those draperies harmonize. Oh, now who? Come in. Oh, hello, Mrs. Uppington. Come in and see what you're responsible for. What I'm responsible? Oh, my dear. Oh, it's lovely. <laughs> All new furniture and draperies. Yeah. And a rug. Oh, how lovely. You like it, Uppy? It's simply charming, Miss McGee. If I had done it myself, I wouldn't change a thing. Not a single thing. Except possibly... Uh, Except what? That smoking stand. <laughs> uh, it's a little modernistic for the room, wouldn't you say? The smoking stand? But, Dad, right at the whole room was refurnished around that smoking stand. And I love it. And you gave it to us. Yeah. Oh, yes, I know. But, but since you have redecorated, it is entirely out of key. Oh. Now, here, I'll show you. No, no. Let's throw it out. No. Uh, yeah. no. Hey, do it. Wait a minute. Oh. Oh. There, now. Hmm. Isn't that better? No, the room is utterly charming. Oh, oh, I don't know what gave you the idea to do it over, but it was a splendid idea. Oh. Goodbye. Uh, oh. Take it easy, dear. Mm. Control yourself. Have a cigar. I can't. There's no place to put the ashes. Forget the ashes. Light up a cigar. Huh? And give me one, too. <laughs> The other day, I went shopping with my wife. As we wandered through the stores from one department to another, I was struck with one thing which seems to me to be quite important. Good taste is on the increase. Manufacturers of clothes, furniture, fabrics, floor coverings, all have been constantly improving the design of their merchandise. You don't have to have a lot of money now to have a beautiful, attractive home, and you don't need a lot of money to keep it beautiful either. You can do that so easily with genuine Johnson's Wax. The wax polish that protects as well as beautifies your floors, furniture, woodwork. That saves you money and saves you work. That has over 100 extra labor-saving uses. There are, of course, imitations of Johnson's Wax on the market. But if I were you, I'd play safe and insist on the genuine Johnson's Wax, liquid, cream, or paste. Oh, McGee, our Edgar 
Bergen and Charlie McCarthy really going to visit us next week? Sure they are. Positively? Absolutely. How can you be sure? Because Charlie McCarthy promised me on bended knee. Who's bended knee? Bergen's. Oh. <laughs> Good night. Good night, all. This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the...